Thank you for joining us for the Ministry of the Word at Redeemed Christian Fellowship in Phoenix, Arizona. We hope the Ministry of the Word will be a blessing to you. Our uh, midweek service is Thursday. That's at 6.30. That is a live stream service, so please jump online and hook up. Um, we have a podcast that comes out every week, usually around Tuesday or Wednesday. You can see that on Spreaker, and then all of our services are, are uh, live streamed and get moved over to our YouTube page. So you can always go there and catch those as well. Um, I think that's all the announcements I have. So please have a safe, enjoyable Memorial Day. Be, be sure to take time to, to uh, just celebrate and thank all those that have um, gone before and, and made it so that we have the lives that we have in this country. Amen. Because uh, it's not for free. Just like our lives in Jesus are not for free. Enjoy them. Take time to celebrate and and in, in Jesus' case, worship <laughs> for the case, for what He's done for us. I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Dave for your offering. God is so good, isn't He? Over at Chris Town. I've been here so long. I actually know what you're talking about. Now I feel old. I remember ice skating in Metro Mall. No, I'm just kidding. I never did that. That was back when the world was back when the world was black and white. I'm so glad for color. It's just we live life so much more vividly now than back in the black and white days. God is so good, isn't he? We are uh, going to do one more special offering for the weights as their day of arrival approaches. And uh, you can see the times have been updated. So Saturday, so mark, mark your phone, <laughs> because you still have a calendar. Mark your day planner. Go on your phone, put on your calendar a reminder. Saturday night, be here, 4 p.m., and then Sunday, uh, we'll do the 10 a.m., and then the 2 p.m. will be at Army of Love Church. God is so good. If you'd like an offering envelope, this is to go to uh, support the uh, budget for the weights when they're coming in town. And you ask Dave, well, what about the rich young ruler? Well, I'm glad you asked. Let's talk about the rich young ruler. Mark chapter 10, verse 21, the rich young ruler came to Jesus. That's a new slide effect we have. <coughs> yeah. God is so good, isn't he? Remember the rich young ruler, he came to Jesus, and he was like, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus is like, well, you know, do the, the commandments. And he's like, I've done all those things since my youth. And Jesus looked at him, and Jesus loved him. And with compassion, he answered him and said, here's the one thing that you lack, rich young ruler, man, sir. Go take all the possessions you have, sell them, give them to the poor, and then come follow me. Notice Jesus didn't say, come sell, and then give me the money. Because Jesus' supply wasn't in mankind. Jesus' supply was from God, his provider. And when he said this, the man went away. He was disappointed. He was bummed because those possessions, it wasn't just that he had possessions. Those possessions had that man. He was, he was trusting in his riches, as First Timothy chapter 6 says. He was trusting in those riches and he couldn't let go of those. He couldn't release those. That's who his trust was in. His trust was in him, himself and in what he could provide for himself. And then Peter was like, well, hey, wait a second. We've left everything to follow you. And the disciples were a little concerned because Jesus was like, how can a rich man enter into the kingdom? And they're like, wait, you know why? Because the disciples were rich. The disciples had substance. Because if they didn't, they wouldn't have been astonished at Jesus' word. They would have been like, yeah, those evil rich people, they're not going to make heaven, but us, we poor disciples, like doctrine teaches today falsely, they wouldn't have been concerned. But they were astonished because they're like, wait a minute, Jesus, what do you mean rich people can't get into heaven? Because the disciples had substance. Jesus wasn't poor. Jesus had wealth. Jesus had a money train following him, women who were following him, looking just to take care of his every necessity. Jesus was not poor. 
the disciples were not in lack. They were not poor, as bad doctrine teaches us. They were astonished, like, what do you mean? Because we're rich, so are we being counted out now too? And Jesus looked at them and said, he said, Jesus answered and said, There is no man that hath left house or brother or sister or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my sake and the gospels, but he shall receive a hundredfold now in this time. Prosperity is in following the plan of God for your life. Amen? Prosperity is in the plan. We don't trust in riches. We don't trust in in possessions or things we trust in the living God who giveth us richly all things to enjoy so when Jesus is like hey are you rich there's rich men who trust in their riches and there are rich men who just have wealth substance in abundance to the full till it overflows we don't trust in riches we trust in the living God we trust in El Shaddai the God of more than enough Jehovah Jireh our provider. That's where our trust is. And because we do the word, because we follow the plan, because we just continue to follow the guidance of the Holy Ghost, wealth comes. Riches come. Houses. I like how he said houses. Because you, you know when they were translating this from the Greek, they were being very precise in the language. And Jesus said houses. Do you, do you hear that? The plural? I could spell it for you, but it's more fun to be houses. You hear that? Possessions, right? We have to renew our mind to bigger, better, mucho, grande, mas, mas, right? You guys are an easy crowd today. God is so good. God, we thank you, Lord. <laughs> we thank you, Lord, for your word. We thank you, Father. That as we give into your work, as we pursue the plan, God, that you cause the seed that we sow to multiply, you cause it to go out and to establish the work and to be a blessing to those who labor in the word. And we give you the praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, good morning. I've always enjoyed Dave's offering slash sermons. They're so, they're such a blessing. Um, no, they really are a blessing. I, I mean, I know I'm joking, but I'm not joking. Um, because he, you know, he knows from experience how to, how to get divine prosperity into his life. And he just has followed the, the word when it comes to giving. And him and, and Deborah, the whole family is just uber blessed, right? So learn from, learn from that. Because um, God is no respecter of persons. And if he can do it for the Gabharts, he can do it for the foster. He can do it for the Cutliffs. He can do it for, and you know, the Magnuses, any, anybody. Um, so anyway, but I'm not here to talk about that. I'm here to take up the tithes and offerings. So if you need an envelope for that, please raise your hands. Uh, Brad will get you an envelope if, if he hasn't already. If you don't have your checkbook, you can give online. You can text to give. And don't forget that you can uh, opt to pay the fee, the processing fee, if you do give online versus having the church to do that. Um, and don't also don't forget that you can designate where you want that offering to go, um, whether it's mini, uh, missions fund, whether it's the weights, you just select other and and it'll get to the right place. Um, but Philippians 419 says, and my God will liberally supply, fill to the full your every need according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus and like Dave was just saying Jesus when he was walking on this earth he was not broke he was not poor he had supply where from God because God supplied all of his needs God supplies all of your needs according to his riches not according to what the economy says not according to what your paycheck says not according to what your bank account says and don't be concerned that eggs are five dollars a dozen God will supply all of your needs don't be shocked at the price of gas just say Lord God you supply all of my needs according to your riches because I tithe because I give and you will ensure that divine prosperity is just exploding in my life 
thank you, Lord Jesus. Father God, we just thank you, Lord. We thank you for your goodness, for your mercy, for your love. We thank you that you are El Shaddai, that you are the God of more than enough, and you will liberally supply all of our need, and then some, Father God. Not just the need, but those things that we desire, Father God. And we just thank you, Lord. We just praise you. We give you all the glory. In your precious holy name we pray. Amen. Father God, in Jesus' name, glory be to God. Father, we just worship you. We just praise you. We just glorify you, Father God. We just acknowledge you, Father God, as our main source, our only source, Father God. We just are so grateful for your presence. We're so grateful for your direction, your insight. We're so grateful for our spiritual development. And we're so grateful for the precious blood of Jesus that has brought the Holy Ghost to reside within us victory every day of our lives. We just thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. To you be all the glory and all the praise. And amen. In Jesus' name, amen. Isn't God good? Thank you. Today is a very special, special day. Isn't it? Say yes, it is. Today is the day that the Lord has made. Amen. So it's always a special day. Amen. But today, um, we're going to license Debbie Gaphart, and she is going to fulfill a role that she's been fulfilling for quite some time as an assistant pastor of this church. It's high time that we recognize the anointing upon her life and her contribution to the work of this ministry. Amen. Her and her husband have uh, been very dedicated to Redeem Christian Fellowship. Uh, they have uh, done so much keep the church going, the work flowing, amen, and the, their contribution cannot be denied, not just uh, in uh, everything you see, they've, they've had major roles in everything you see, uh, whether it be uh, the, the Holy Grounds or whether it be in here, uh, they have uh, given their lives to make sure that Redeemed Christian Fellowship succeeds, but most of all, Debbie has been assisting me for, I don't know, over 15 years, 14 years, over 15 years. Uh, so everything that you see here is had some her fingerprint on it. Amen. And uh, so God is so good, isn't he? Uh, and so I just want, uh, the first time the Lord just impressed it on my heart as to the role that she should be fulfilling in this church, I kind of you know, didn't know what to do with that. <laughs> Amen. Uh, without realizing it, I was, I'd was i say things like, you know, go, do what you got to do. Don't worry about the church. Don't worry about me. Go do what you got to do. We'll be fine without you. Go. Amen. But she refused to do that. And thank God for a faithful husband that recognizes the anointing on a person on his wife's life amen both of them are very anointed god is so merciful glory be to god but uh debbie is the one that the lord has been talking to me about for quite some time well over a year amen and so uh because of that uh i wanted you all to know that uh that what she is stepping into is no different than what she's already been doing for quite some time. Amen? God is so good. So I believe that I have the judgment of the Lord. Amen? So I believe what I'm doing is God-ordained. And so because of that, we want to license Debbie today and acknowledge her as a licensed minister and uh, to fulfill the role of assistant pastor to minister here at Redeemed Christian Fellowship. Uh, uh, here is a person that's always been kind, always been generous, always been uplifting to everybody, never caused strife, never caused division, but always made the church, put the church first and most of all. She has taken very good care of me course so is Dave without them uh, Redeemed Christian Fellowship 
uh, wouldn't have what it has. And I'm just recognizing what God has done through them. Amen. So that everyone would acknowledge that God has blessed us with a very powerful couple. And so we're very, very grateful for that. Amen. So, uh, uh, so would you all stretch forth your hands up here? Deborah, would you please come? Come up here and give me a hand. I'll stand right here behind us. Right over here. And hold this mic. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, we just give you praise, glory, and honor, Father God. We just lay hands on Debbie as the scripture instructs us to do. And as Moses prayed for Joshua, I impart my wisdom, my insight, my knowledge of your spirit into Debbie in Jesus' mighty name that she might walk and carry out your plan for her life at Redeemed Christian Fellowship. We give you all the glory and all the praise, Father God. In Jesus' name, amen. You, Isn't Jesus. God good? Yes, sir. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Deborah, show everybody what your certificate. Hallelujah, glory be to God. And so now I will sit down so Debbie can minister to you. this about crying today. <laughs> uh, God is good. First of all, pray. Thank you, Father God, for your word. We thank you, Lord, for all that you've done in each and every one of our lives, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that you are the only one who can change and impact our lives in such a powerful and miraculous and mighty way. <clears throat> I thank you, Lord, for your anointing and your gifts and your callings. And we give you all the glory and honor for all that you do and recognize in our lives, Father God. I ask, Lord, that you'll calm my heart and my mind. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So all that is left is for you to be glorified in my, all that I do in your word. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm not going to cry. <laughs> amen fighting back tears since yesterday. <laughs> Miss Joy sent me some really sweet messages. God is good. So pastor asked me to teach on, um, uh, actually this topic is, is really uh, near and dear to my heart. And so I was really actually excited when he asked me to teach on this topic. Um, this teaching is actually in one of his ministerial ethics manuals it's called the like-minded principle, but really we're talking about faithfulness today. And uh, that stems from being like-minded. So this teaching is designed to bring spiritual promotion. In other words, these things lead to being used of God. It is the following qualities that God exalts and elevates. He gives greater degrees of the anointing and ministry to those who walk in them. So he specifically asked me, to share things about myself. <laughs> and it's, uh, it's not easy to talk about myself. You guys know me. Um, so uh, when, before service today, Pastor Walter was helping me. <laughs> and uh, I wrote down some of the things he was uh, reminding me of. And I'm going to share them with you. Loyalty is birthed out of the realization of what God was doing for me at RCF and through the man of God that he placed me under who was dedicated to my personal spiritual growth. So in other words, the loyalty that I have in me is because I recognize what God was doing for me here through Pastor Walter and how he was dedicated 
never gave up on me. To me, growing and developing and not staying where I was, a lot of you knew me when I first came here. My family's here, they can testify, and I give them my permission and blessing to share what I was like before I came here. Because I was broken. And I was little, I was 14 years old, and I was lost, and it had nothing to do with my uh, surroundings or anything that anyone did to me. It was just, an, it, was, it, was, it was a design of the enemy to, 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 to destroy me. And so I don't place blame on anyone other than the enemy because he's, he's evil, <laughs> he's stupid. But I was that person when I came here, and I wasn't a nice person to be around. I wasn't always kind and easy to get along with. But when I came here, Pastor Walter recognized something in me, and everyone here really recognized the potential in me and, and took care of me and taught me and brought me out of that place and counseled me through hours and hours of tears and uh, 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 just feeling like life would never be good for me. I remember one of the first times that Pastor Walter prophesied, and this is the exact pr first prophecy that I ever received here at RCF through Pastor Walter. I was in the youth group. We were here on a Wednesday night, and uh, during praise and worship, Pastor Walter was filling in that night for who I call Uncle Blue. And uh, he uh, called me up, singled me out, and he said uh, that God has a plan for my life and that he would make me happy. And that was the first time I ever experienced what it was like to have hope. Hope in a plan that God had for me. And I clung to that hope. That was, the, you know, we're going to talk about life-changing moments. Uh, 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 what was the word you used? A spiritual awareness of, of these life-changing moments. And... Uh, uh, I clung to that hope, you know, uh, just that I remember vividly walking around, even at school, and I would think, God's going to make me happy. It doesn't matter what's going on right now. God's going to make me happy. And then that next weekend, I messed up. I went to a party, and I got drunk. And I thought, I'm such a screw-up. God's never going to use me. I have just lost that word that God gave me, and I shouldn't be here. But I would come back to church because I wanted that back. I wanted that back. So I came back. I repented. I got right with God. And he continued to change me. And I would see glimpses of happiness throughout my life in each stage of my life. But that was the first moment. Let's get into the teaching. Actually, hold on. You said a couple more things that I wanted to share. So when I realized what God was doing at RCF and what God had called the church to do, I wanted to be a part of that. I realized what God had called this church to. And I saw the greatness in our man of God. I saw what God put in him and the understanding of the word that I have never experienced anywhere else to such a degree. I could ask him anything, and he would be able to answer my questions. And I saw that, and I wanted to be a part of that. And so no matter what happened, I came here seeking to be a part of it. So when that happens, it will cause you to want to have the same mind, to be a part of what God has called the church to do. And out of that pursuit comes sacrifice. There were many, many times where I set aside what I thought I wanted to do to be able to be here, to be able to be a part of it. There were hours and hours of, of driving around, and, and, uh, and, and uh, running errands and doing things that other people might not think is that important. But there was a, a, a spiritual significance in the sacrifice that was being made in the dedication to be a part of what God was doing here. So let's start with Philippians chapter 2, verses 19 through 22. And pay attention to this. Paul's talking about Timothy. It says, but I trust 
in the Lord Jesus to send Timotheus shortly unto you that I also may be of good comfort when I know your state. So he's sending Timothy to him because he trusts Timothy. He's going to be comforted by the fact that he knows who he's sending and that he can trust what Timothy's going to say. For I have no man like-minded who will naturally care for your estate. He will care for them the way, that exact same way that Paul would care for them if he was there in person. For all seek their own, not the things which are Christ, Jesus Christ's. But you know the proof of him, that as the son, as a son with the Father, he hath served with me in the gospel. As a son with the Father, he served with me in the gospel. Don't we have an amazing spiritual father in our midst? When it comes to understanding the principles of advancing the work, there is no greater principle than the like-minded principle. It is a place of spiritual promotion. One of the greatest hindrances of the work of the Lord is found in the multitudes of opinions that people have. So, in other words, differences of opinions, if you're not like-minded with the one who is in charge, they will hinder the work. If you don't line up with how your man of God thinks, you're going to hinder the work that, is, that, that you're called to help. Because that's what we're here for. We're here to help, help grow this work and do what God's asked us to do. So whether it is the direction the church is going in or the projects the church is involved in, there is always someone with differing opinions. I mean, I, we've all experienced being a part of something, not necessarily here, but we've all experienced where people butt heads. And it, it, it's truly, you know, it affects everything. It affects the work. It affects the atmosphere, the environment. It makes you feel awful. You just don't want to be, be there anymore, you know? So, so that's, that's something we've got to guard against when we're here working. And, you know, yesterday was such a wonderful experience, working together, cleaning the church, getting it ready for next weekend. So although different ideas and opinions do have a healthy place in ministry, they are never more dangerous than when the decision has already been, been made to go down a certain avenue. This is a place where all ministries, ministers, and laymen alike should simply hook up for the benefit of the cause. Uh, there, like I said earlier, that there were a lot of times that there was sacrifice in my life. There, there have been times where Pastor Walter has asked me to do something, and, uh, you know, say for example, let's do a simple example, buying a certain type of mop. Well, I may have had a different opinion at one point, but as soon as Pastor Walter said, stop talking and buy the, buy the mop I told you to buy, yes, sir. Right away, sir. <laughs> I will, sir. You know, you know, that can irk someone's flesh. That can get them, you know, it's just a mop, but that can get someone riled up. This is where you make the choice to be like-minded, to hook up and not allow your own opinions, how simple they are, to interfere with what the man of God has asked you to do. It is here that the benefits of the like-minded principle can be found. <laughs> yesterday, um, we were working, I'm talking about being like-minded, so yesterday we were working, and everyone was here giving their time and sewing, and so I knew, without even asking, that Pastor Walter would want to feed all of you guys for being here and, and, and sewing into the work of the ministry. And so I went ahead and I ordered pizza. And when I was done, I went to Pastor Walter. I said, Pastor Walter, I ordered pizza for everyone. And I said, I knew you'd want to do that, but I didn't want to put that burden on you, so I took care of it for you. And so uh, I, he said, I would. Thank you. That's being like-minded. That's having the same mind as the man of God, to where I don't even have to ask him what he thinks. I just know. And so I can be a blessing and help him without him having to do the work. <laughs> it was good pizza. <laughs> so I didn't say that, obviously, to draw attention to what I did. It was just the, the fact that it was being like-minded. So those operating in the like-minded principle are often seen by the leaders as individuals who have caught the vision of the organization they are serving in. You caught the vision. You catch it. You run with it. You take it and you go and you do what he's asked you. You're the work. You're the hands. You do what the vision, what God has put, what vision God has put in his heart. That came out. 
The Greek word for like-minded is comprised of two words. The first word means equal or same, and the second word means soul. So the Greek could actually be translated as same mind or attitude or equal in soul. The idea is feeling the same way in the way that you think. So there are feelings that come with the way that you are thinking. You think the same way, you feel the same way, you do the same things. Those, uh, you know, when you can, when you do sense that flesh rising up, that's not completely like-minded. That's, you know, that's that's that opportunity to make that choice to bend your will yes. towards the other person's will. But what we're seeking is that like-minded state where we think the same way, feel the same way, and that affects. That's that. What did Pastor Walter say? He said, uh, there is no greater principle than the like-minded principle when it comes to spiritual promotion and ministry in the church, promoting the ministry. If one does not already feel the same about the decisions that have been made, it is important to hook up by making adjustments in the way things are viewed mentally. We have to retrain our thinking retrain ourselves because we're already, you know, we're already adults. We already have our own thoughts, our own opinions, our own way of doing things. What we're doing here is we're retraining ourselves to be able to promote the work of God, what God has called us to do. This isn't about any of us. This is about what God's work is because there is no greater reward than serving God. All of this down here will burn up, change, be gone. You'll leave it behind. But what we do for God will last forever. So there is nothing greater than serving God. It is here when a decision has been made to take a certain path that the importance of being like-minded is found. And this reminded me of Amos 3.3. 3. Can two walk together except they be agreed? If you're going to continue walking with the man of God, line up with what God has put in his heart, that's where the blessings will be found. Being like-minded or having the same soul has within its makeup the same feelings and attitudes as your leader. It is so important to your leader that you feel the same way that he feels concerning the decisions that he's had to make. It's important. It's important to him, not just to, to, to what God's desire is for you. It's important to the man of God to see that, that you support him that you're there for him. Uh, um, when, uh, when, you, when you make a decision and someone uh, disagrees with your decision, it's hard on you to, to, to carry that out. Now you're worried about what they think, what they're feeling, what they're going through, instead of focusing on what you need to do, on the, the, the path you're taking. You know, they're, they're the, we all have decisions to make, and each decision will lead you down a certain path. What, what decision are you going to make? What will that consequence be? Are you going to hook up, be like-minded to the man of God so that you guys can walk together and, and see the plan of God fu be fulfilled in your life? Or are you going to make your own path like Barnabas did? And then we never heard from him again. He chose a different path. He made the wrong choice line up, hook up, make the right choice. <laughs> Having the same mind means that you not only feel and think the same way, but that you would also do the same thing. Philippians 2, 19-22, which was the first verse we read, reveals to us that Timothy was the only one who felt, thought, and acted like Paul did. Remember, he said, I have no one like-minded. He was the only one that Paul could fully count on and trust. He he, he wouldn't have to check in with what Timothy's doing. Hey, did you teach what I told you to teach? Did you tell them? Did you warn them? Did you give them the message that God gave me for them? Or did you do your own thing? He had no one he could trust like that but Timothy. Timothy was operating in the like-minded principle. Not everyone starts off feeling the same way about how ministry should be done and the direction that it's going. If you don't make the needed adjustments, Retrain yourself. Don't allow yourself to be uh, excluded from the gifts and callings of God on your life. Uh, I like what some, something that Pastor Nancy said 
uh, not long ago about there were some things in herself that she didn't like and she, you know, maybe it was a personality trait or something, she didn't expound on it. But then I started thinking about myself. There are things in myself that, that I'm like, oh, that's kind of weird. <laughs> I don't want to be the weird one, you know? <laughs> I, some things I'm like, I'm like oh, I wish I wasn't quite so strange sometimes. And these were my personal thoughts, right? And so uh, this is what she said about things she didn't like in herself. God reminded her of 2 Corinthians 5.17 that old things are passed away. All things are made new. So if there's something in you that you need to retrain and, 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 and get lined up to be like-minded, old things are passed away. You don't have to allow the, that in your life, in your heart any longer. It's all made new. So notice how Paul encouraged the Philippians. I almost called them Philippines. <laughs> how call, Paul encouraged the Philippians to have the same mind. Now we're going to read uh, Philippians 2, 2 through 4. It says, Fulfill ye my joy that you be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind let each esteem utter, utter, other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. There is so much in these verses that define the personality and characteristics of the Apostle Paul. I like how Pastor points this out. For instance, the importance of love and unity are strongly seen here. This is who Paul was. I loved that. I was like, you know, I never really thought of the things that Paul said as being part of who he was. It's true, though. When you, when you see when he's encouraging uh, us to, to be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord of one mind, that's all part of who he was. And so he's encouraging us to be the same way. So these are the characteristics of Paul's ministry, the way he felt and the way he thought. He also addresses some things that tear apart at the very fabric of unity, like strife and vainglory. Thank God that we have overcome strife and vainglory in this church. Thank God that we can be in one accord. Thank God that we, us here right now, get to be a part of what God has called RCF to, that we get to see it. There have been many people who have come and gone, but us in this room, we get to see it. We get to be a part of it. We get to experience it because there are great things for this man of God that we get to be a part of. That work, those books, you said at 47? 37 books and more. He's got like eight more. <laughs> That, that, he's, that he's got and he's going to hold on to, but he's got them near completion. And, and, and we get to be a part of that work and get to see how it impacts the world. So, ooh. Stop and reflect for a moment, if you will, upon the characteristics and personality of your leader and those around you. Pastor Walter, this is the moment you told me to, in your notes, to reflect. Pastor Walter does not like attention being called to him because he wants all glory to go to God, which it does. We know this. We know that without God, none of us would be here. We know that without God, our man of God wouldn't be who he is. So we give all glory to God. But we're reflecting on our pastor for, sorry, for a moment. Uh, uh, Pastor Walter has dedicated more than half of his life, or almost half of his, I think it's almost half of his life, to developing us, to teaching us. Uh, he's a strong man, he's full of character, and, and more than anything, he's got great faith. And he, desire, that's his one desire for all of us, is to have faith and to be able to experience the things that God has promised us by faith. Uh, and, and so when we reflect on who our pastor is, uh, I, I just can't imagine those who can't recognize it. I just don't understand. Uh, I like what Pastor Walter shared with me, the first thing I shared that I wrote down. Uh, without Pastor Walter in my life and, and without what he did for me, I wouldn't be where I am. I wouldn't have the things I have. Uh, I, again, I came here broken, hurting, 
I, I needed God in my life. And Pastor Walter showed me. He walked me. He didn't only show me. He walked me through painstakingly to get to where I am. Uh, there was a moment I was reflecting on earlier. Um, uh, Monica, Pastor, and I were working. Pastor and Monica were working on some notes, and I was just there kind of in the background helping. And uh, uh, I was engaged, so I would have been probably 21-ish uh, at that point. And uh, I, was, I had some personal concerns and worries, um, almost fears, I would say, about my life and the direction I was heading because I so badly just wanted to serve God. And I was afraid that if I got married and had kids, that it would take away from the callings on my life that I knew were in there. I didn't know how to put them into words, but I knew there was in, that it was in there and that I just had to serve God. And, uh, and I didn't voice that to anyone. I didn't tell anyone. Um, I, I uh, was just struggling internally with this. And Pastor Walter uh, was taking a break on notes, and he came out, and he, uh, I didn't tell him this. He couldn't, visibly probably couldn't see any struggle, but he looked at me and he said, God told me, you can have it all. You can serve me, and you can have those things that I put in your heart. You can get married, you can have a family, you can have it all. And in that moment, it settled everything that was inside of me. It, it settled all that turmoil that was inside of me, dark, trying to distract me and get me off course. And, I, and, and uh, uh, that's one of those spiritual awareness, what, spiritual encounters is what he said uh, earlier, that, that, that moment that, that impacted my life. And, and, and kept me on that course that God had for me. So endeavor to take those good qualities, we're talking about the man of God again, and characteristics and make them your own in order to develop the like-minded principle. So, so these are things that I've reflected on. Take the time personally to reflect on the man of God in your life. Stir up those things in you again, that, 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 that hunger, that desire, that passion that God put in you. To, to be like-minded and reflect on the characteristics of your man of God so that you can follow him as he follows Christ. Paul addresses the importance of the like-minded like -minded principle again to, <laughs> to the Corinthians. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10, he says, Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing, and that there be no division among you, but that you... Be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. That I mean, four things he mentions that you that you speak the same thing. Be perfectly joined together in the same mind and the same judgment. I mean, he's emphasizing to be the same, to be like-minded here. Notice in verse ten, he uses the word beseech. The word beseech in the Greek represents a strong and zealous plea. It can even be translated as beg. So the verse could be saying, "Now I beg you." When you picture someone begging in, a, in, in the way that this is describing, it's almost like he's desperate for you to understand that this is important, that you have to be like-minded uh, and doing the same things. He continues to plead with the church at Corinth that they all speak the same things and that there be no divisions or splits among them and they be perfectly joined together. In order to see what God has for RCF, in order to, to see the end, to see the, 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 the results, I'm trying to come up with the word, but, but there, is a, there is a purpose here. And in order to see that purpose come to pass, we have to be the same. We have to be in one accord and like-minded and think the same, feel this. I like how Pastor Walter takes it up the next step, feel the same. He emphasizes about uh, that, that, the word to feel the same way. Um, so the Greek word for perfectly joined together means to position or arrange yourself in such a way that there is a perfect fit. The idea of being perfectly joined together then is that the responsibility is that is the responsibility of all parties involved. It's all of us, all of us here. It's all of our responsibility to make that choice, to make an effort, to be perfectly joined together. 
Uh, Like-mindedness does away with the independent thinker because they think the same way. We're not independent thinkers. We think the same way. We feel the same way. We act the same way. And it's not in a punishing way. It's all so that we can be a part of what God has called us to and see what, what, what the end result, the fruit of that labor, so we can experience it and be a part of it. Uh, uh, God has a plan, and I want to be a part of that plan. I want to see it. I want to experience it. The scripture says to be perfectly joined together in the same mind and the same judgment for those seeking promotion and advancement. Know that these are the ones who God will use. This is how promotion, spiritual promotion comes. Uh, they are also the ones who the Holy Ghost illuminates to the pastor and to the other leaders. For those of you who, are, who know they are to be used of God, the like-minded principle must be obtained. Now we're going to talk about faithfulness. Uh, we're going to look at 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1 and 2. It says, Let a man so account of us as of the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. It also takes faithfulness to work with and under someone. If this element is missing, the work suffers greatly. One of the, the things that Ms. Joy said to me in text message last night when she uh, uh, was congratulating me about becoming licensed today, she said that you have been serving God faithfully. And I'm just so grateful to be, nope, nope, not going to cry. I'm just so grateful to be here, that I get to be a part of it that I get to experience this, and, and that God had a purpose for me here and has a purpose for all of us here. Just, I'm just so thankful. But the word faithful means trustworthy, worthy of trust. I, uh, I, I, it reminds me of Proverbs 25, 19. Uh, putting your trust in an unfaithful man is like a broken tooth and a foot out of joint. It's painful when you can't trust someone, or to be, when you're faithful, you're going to be worthy of someone trusting you. You've earned that trust because you've displayed faithfulness. It's dependable. You can be, you're, so, so to be dependable is to be responsible and steadfast. You're not going to give up. You can be dependent on. That's faithfulness. To be, to be, steadfast in what you're doing not you don't waver easily right. you're dependable you're reliable which is consistent and honest i can i can when someone is consistent and honest they're reliable and i can trust that person again they've earned that trust those are characteristics of faithfulness uh uh if you're not consistent then how can you be counted on? How can you be relied on and called upon if you're not consistently there, being a part of the work, sacrificing to be there, and putting everything aside for the sake of the call, for the sake of the work? This is what faithfulness is about. One of the attributes of faithfulness is loyalty. I'm going to turn to 1 Corinthians 4, uh, 15 now. should have opened this earlier. Okay, so verse 15 says, For though you have... 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet you have not many fathers. For in Christ Jesus I have begotten you through the gospel. Verse 16 says, Wherefore I beseech you, be you followers of me. For this cause, this is verse 17, for this cause I have sent unto you Timotheus, who is my beloved son and faithful in the Lord, who shall bring you into remembrance of my ways, which be in Christ, as I teach everywhere in every church. 
Paul was Timothy's spiritual father. He points out that you, you, know, you have many teachers. You don't have many fathers. We have a spiritual father here who is dedicated to our spiritual development. Um, Paul sent Timothy because he could be trusted to instruct them in Paul's ways, in his own ways, not Timothy's ways. Timothy was the only one who was like-minded, who would teach what Paul would teach, who would say what Paul would teach. There are many times when Pastor Walter has asked me to teach, and uh, the first thing I asked is, what do you want me to teach? The second thing I asked is, can I use your notes? <laughs> can I use your books? Can I use your notes? Uh, because they're unmatched. Uh, there's nothing that I could come up with that Pastor Walter hasn't studied in depth to a greater degree than I could ever do. And so I can safely rely on the notes that Pastor Walter has teach. But it reminds me of Timothy, though, because he did the same thing. So there's nothing wrong with what I do. <laughs> right. Right. Timothy taught what Paul taught. He said what Paul said. Yeah. He was counted, he could be counted on to not deviate from what he was instructed to do because he was trustworthy, he was faithful, he was dependable. I, I mean, why, I, I, we're in training here. We're all here to be trained and develop. So why would I, why would I not take part of what God has done here already? I, I just, I mean, I'm not sorry for it. <laughs> but this character, being faithful, is sometimes hard to find. Proverbs 20, verse 6 says, Most men will proclaim everyone his own goodness, but a faithful man who can find. Proverbs tells us that a faithful man is hard to find. I mean, can't argue with the word. Second Timothy 2.2 2 says, And these things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men, who shall be able to teach others also. Remember that Timothy was like-minded as well as faithful. This quality is very helpful to the like-minded person. Now we're going to end with the um, topic of humility, because... Our goal here is to be like-minded for the same purpose, for the same goals, to serve God. So humility means to be lowly of mind, to mentally see yourself in a lowered position. You know, a lot of the sacrifices it takes to be a part of a, 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 something bigger than yourself yeah. is going to require humility. You're going to have to see yourself as less important. I mean, not maybe not less. I like how Pastor said it better, as in a lower position. <laughs> Uh, because y y you can't elevate yourself above the work or above the call of God. Uh, you just can't. So 1 Peter 5, 5 through 6 says, Likewise, you younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another and be clothed with humility. For God resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that, you may be exalt that he may exalt you in due time. So the word submit means to put yourself under. You can always tell when someone has a problem submitting because they have stronger views and they prefer to do things in, a different, in different ways. So they question everything and are prone to bump heads. This person has trouble hooking up. Why? Because they don't think the same way. They haven't uh, mastered the like-minded principle. The word humility means that you are already under. The humble person is already hooked up. Humility is the only cure for pride. And what is pride? Pride thinks too highly of itself. Humil humility, though, values others over itself and values someone else's opinions, plans, ideas, and views over their own. If you're wondering, how do I retrain myself to be like-minded, humble yourself. This is how you retrain yourself. You humble yourself. You humble yourself to the word of God. You humble yourself to the plan of God for your life. And you humble yourself under the man of God that he's put you under. Because it's a safe place to be. It's, it's a safe covering. You can, you can trust what God is doing here. Uh, look at my life and see what God did for me. 
by applying these things to my life because he can do the same thing for anyone. It doesn't matter how broken you think you are. It doesn't matter how old you are, how young you are. It doesn't matter what you think because God can do it for you. If he did it for me, he can do it for you. God exalts the humble. Proverbs 16, verses 18 through 19 says, Pride goes before destruction, and in haughty spirit before a fall. Better it is to be of an humble spirit with the lowly than to divide the spoil with the proud. You will never be promoted spiritually if you don't humble yourself. If you don't, if, you know, I like how Pastor said, pr- uh, humbleness is the only cure for pridefulness. And we know that, uh, th- we just read that pride comes before a fall. Haughty spirit before destruction. I think this has right here. <laughs> uh, you know, have you ever seen someone who uh, gets a little bit proud of themselves? Look what I'm doing. Look how strong I am. You know, uh, I was watching an axe cutting, or not axe, a uh, wood chopping contest once. And, uh, you know, the young guys are, look at me. I could do great things. And, uh, and uh, as soon as they got prideful, they messed up. And it reminded me of this scripture, that pride comes before a fall. So humble yourself. What did you say? I can tell you about it later. You were probably there. <laughs> Proverbs twenty nine twenty three says, A man's pride shall bring him low, but honor shall uphold the humble in spirit. So this is why Pastor Walter points out that the one who is like-minded, the Holy Spirit will illuminate them to their leader. The Holy Spirit will say, that's the one. That's the faithful servant. That's the one you can trust. That's the one you can count on. Humble yourself. Be like-minded. Have the same heart, the same mind, the same goals. Philippians, we're going to end with this scripture. Philippians chapter 2, verses 3 through 9 says, Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. Pastor Walter was talking to me about this recently. Do you remember? We were talking about how Christ as God humbled himself, came down. He almost made me cry. Uh, It's probably not in his notes yet, but it will be, hopefully in a book soon. Um, So, uh, but, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant who was made in the likeness of men. And being found in the fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. Oh my goodness. That just, my heart fills with so much joy. So look for the faithful, humble, and like-minded people to work with or be that person yourself. Be humble. Be like-minded. Be faithful. For those who have these qualities, are followed by the blessings of God. That's the end, Pastor. Wrap it up. God is good. Thank you guys all for being here. Thank you, everyone, for your support. And uh, I am touched and blessed and just honored that you guys all love and support me and have been with me for many years. And... Thank you. Thank you, everyone. God is good. We love you all. Be blessed. We're dismissed. Thank you for joining us today. If the ministry of the word has been a blessing to you, please consider contributing to the work of the ministry at www.redeemedcf.breezechms.com forward slash give forward slash online. You can also text to give by texting the amount you would like to give to 602-962-3848.
If you have a testimony of how the ministry of the Word has been a blessing to you, please send us a message on one of our social media platforms. We would love to hear from you. Thank you for your continued support of the work here at Redeemed Christian Fellowship.